Hi, my name is Dana Beck. Welcome to my YouTube video. And today, what I'd like to share with you is five of 10 strategies to improve open rates. Now, there, there's 10, and for the sake of time, I'm only going to cover the first five today, and then in my next video, I'll cover the second five. So, five of 10 strategies to improve open rates. You know, and you can send out hundreds and hundreds of emails, but if nobody is opening up your emails, then it's really it's really wasted effort. And and you get more efficiency out of your email campaigns to increase your open rates. Here again are five strategies, five of 10 strategies that will help with your open rates. So let's get right into it, okay? So the first one is do not buy email addresses. That's right, don't buy email addresses. And you know, many entrepreneurs in, in order to get traction when they're starting a new campaign, you know, they'll purchase email, you know, email address lists. However, you should resist the temptation to do this. You should really avoid this as much as possible, really. And, you know, there are many, many, many online offers uh, to buy email lists. But you know what? Uh, they will more than likely hurt your email campaign instead of helping it. Why? Well, the owners of these email addresses, they don't know you. They don't know your product. They don't know your service. They don't know anything about you. All they have is, a, is an inventory of email addresses, and they don't know anything about you. Also, you know, equally, the people on these email address lists, they don't know your offer as well. So there's a very good possibility, I would say a very, very good possibility, that you won't even uh, know how interested uh, they are in, you know, in the offer that you're presenting, all right? You know, they're... And you'll never know if they're a right fit for what you have to offer. There's no congruency there. There's no there's no connection there. Because again, this is a cold list. They don't know you. You don't know them. And again, um, purchasing email lists is not a very effective strategy. Um, and in the long run, will not benefit you. Will not benefit you. So, number two. What's number two? Well, number two is. Be knowledgeable of canned spam. Dana, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> canned spam. Um, uh, what are canned spam rules? Well, canned spam, and it stands for controlling the assault of non-solicited pornography and marketing. It is an act that was passed in 2003. Essentially, uh, it is a it is a law that establishes the rules for commercial email and commercial messages, and it gives recipients the right to opt out to um, uh, you know to opt out of, of, of you know of a solic you know solicitation. Uh, they have it gives them the option to uh, have businesses stop emailing them to get them off their email list, and it outlines penalties incurred for for those who violate the law now below this uh, video i'll have a hyperlink uh for the um, can spam reference um it's on the um it's an ftc government site but i'll have a link for it if you want to read uh, in depth what the can spam uh rules and regulations are but in order to be can spam compliant it's important that your email messages follow the following rules Key, well, some, these are some of the key points. These are not all the rules. If I tried to tell you all the rules, we'd be here for a while. It's, it's a pretty lengthy document. But here are the, some of the key highlights. Number one, include a valid physical postal address in every email you send out. You know, at the very, very bottom of your email, um, usually in fine print, it'll have the address of the person sending the email. Where, where you want to make sure you have a valid mailing address, not email address, a valid mailing address at the bottom of your email you're sending out. Give recipients, those that open up your email, give them a clear and obvious way to get out of it. You know, how, how they can unsubscribe uh, and make sure that's clear on every email you send out. And also use very, very clear to and from and uh, or to and reply rather, excuse me, to and reply a language that accurately reflects who you are, and avoid no reply or similar, you know, sender names, you know, which prevents recipients from opting out of an email newsletter if they don't like to, you know, if they don't want to. Um, and, and also, 
um, they cannot respond to your email if it's a no reply. That's just a real red flag. So you want to avoid, you know, uh, using no reply in your return email address. And then avoid selling or transferring any email addresses to another list. That is a big one. You get caught with that, you can get major fines. So don't do that. And then, and now these points are part of a more, like I said, a more extensive uh, list you know that can be found on the URL that I mentioned a moment ago which will be below this video uh, which covers all of the aspects of this you know of this um, uh, of this law okay so what's number three number three and number three is you know opt-in process complies with G you know GDPR make sure your opt-in pro <laughs> I can't even talk today make sure your opt-in process complies with GDPR regulations. Now, here's another one, GDPR. What the heck is GDPR? Maybe you've heard that acronym flying around the internet and so forth. Well, in general, um, you, you know, in, in general, the, the head of the General Data Protection Regulation, Regulation, GDPR, a new law enacted across Europe in May of 2018 to better protect internet users personal data now if you're feeling ambitious here's another one <laughs> you can read the details of GDPR from the um, Wikipedia website I'll have a link for this as well below the video so if you want to read more on GDPR you can do so now some of the highlights of GDPR you know when your website users land on a page that solicits their personal information uh, tradition might tell you to include pre-checked a pre-checked box that automatically opts the user into an email campaign so they can receive updates and special offers related to your business. In other words, you know, it's like a little checkbox, you know, I wish to receive newsletters and updated information from you. And if you if you set it up to where it automatically, you know, uh, checks out a uh, checkbox, that is in violation of GDPR rules. You've got, you cannot have the default checkbox checked. It's got to be unchecked. Uh, and again, having this box, having this box pre-checked is in violation of GDPR. So, so it has, you know, the default, especially if you're doing any business in Europe and you want to comply with GDPR, it's got to be unchecked. Now there are, there are other some there are other nuances, but this is really the big one. And again, you can uh, go to the website that'll be below this video to learn more about GDPR. All right. And what's number four? Number four. Number four is email new contacts within 24 hours. When someone subscribes to your list, um, now you can use your autoresponder to do that, um, but don't wait a day or two or you know three or four days before you, you send them an email as soon as they opt in boom within that 24 hour period you should be getting an email out to them um and it's important to take advantage of the window of opportunity when you know when your company or brand is at the top of the prospect's mind they just opted in to your list so they're still you know they're still thinking about you know your ad or your post or whatever it was Make sure you, you strike while the iron is hot, so to speak. Um, email your contacts within 24 hours. And I would even do it as soon as you can. And uh, you can set your autoresponder up to send out an email, again, within 24 hours or less. It should, it should be pretty easy. And then number five, number five. I want to go into number five here. Send emails from a real person. That's right. <laughs> Send emails from a real person. Send your emails from a real person, not your company. When you send an email from a real person, you know, your email open rate will increase, plain and simple. Um, and, you know, because people are more than likely to engage with a person than a faceless company name. And people generally respond um, at the you know at the personal level the human element and people are so flooded and you look at your inbox you're flooded with spam emails and hustlers that they often hesitate to open an email from an unfamiliar sender conversely people are more likely to trust personalized sender uh, name and email addresses than a generic one uh, here's some ideas here's some examples um, Say your name is Joe Smith, all right, and 
So what you want to do is Joe Smith at golfballs.com um, instead of instead of marketing team from a marketing team at uh, golfballs.com. So you want to have it like Joe Smith at golfballs.com as opposed to marketing team at golfballs.com. You see, you want to have a personal name in there, and that that is really this is a great practice. Um, and it's also a good practice to you know to do um, to do an A B test. What works best for your particular company, your brand, or you know your business, um, as well as what's I you know what's ideally based on whom you're sending you know emails to. That's really important. So hopefully you got value out of this. And again, these are five uh, these are five uh, strategies you can utilize to oh, you know increase your open rates and again just a quick recap do not mail do not buy email addresses don't buy email address lists that's a that's a big one uh, abide by can spam rules and again there'll be a link for that below this video so you can you know read, read up on that ensure your opt-in process complies with gdpr and again that there'll be a link for that also below this video so you can learn more about gdpr but again for that one real real simple make sure the default is not you know the checkbox okay make sure the default is unchecked uh email new contacts within 24 hours and then number five send your emails from a real live person not you know not some official title uh, from your company or your business whatever all right and you know if you practice these you know these first five strategies it will definitely increase your open rates so hopefully you got value out of this and if you did please leave a comment I would very very much appreciate it and uh, and also you know if, if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel I would very much appreciate it there'll be a subscribe button something looks some, something like this down here below, your little right hand corner, somewhere in that area. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then, um, and, it, and again, if you'd like to learn more strategies, more insight on how you can build your own solid online business and be successful online, well, let me give you, let me sh uh, share with you a link that you can go to. Here's a link. Now, this will be uh, a video, uh, a video. This will be a link below the video. So, a hyperlink you can just click on. And again, this is a, a site. This is not an MOM. This is not an income opportunity. It is not, you know, a bait and switch. It's none of those things. What it is is a training center, a training hub that will provide all the tools, all the strategy, all the insight, everything you need to be successful online. So, thank you so very much for watching my video. Watch for my next video where I'll cover the next five strategies on how to improve your open rates okay thanks so much for watching uh take care and i look forward to seeing you in my next video bye bye now